This is the way we, Moldovans, greet each other. With this word, we wish each other good luck when we begin our journeys. Our roads always bring you to a place where you feel like home. This is Moldova, a tree that grows on a fertile land. And this is how we want to be known to the whole world. That is why the tree of life is our symbol. It represents the contemporary Moldova, but also the origins of our nation. As the tree is often crafted in our traditional carpets, included in UNESCO's patrimony. The roots symbolize the development and continuous growth. We crowned our tree with a rose, our metaphor for love and family. In the rose, we find the symbol of digital connectivity. Hope and faith are represented by the symbol of the cross. The cups celebrate the pride for our legendary wines. The fabric symbolizes the craftsmanship, including our textile industry. The screw represents the automotive and electronic sector. A symbol of our tradition, the basil is associated with protection and purity. Vegetables and fruit tell us about the diversity of orchards. The intertwined branches illustrate the infrastructure and the economic bridge between the West and the East. Finally, the M letter from the name of Moldova symbolizes the land that holds our spirit. The fertile soil on which any idea, initiative or investment comes to life and brings harvest. In a fast changing world, we come with a promise and an honest invitation. Be our guest and grow your business here with us. Welcome to the first pitching session. Startup Moldova. Moderator Natalia Bejan, Executive Director, Startup Moldova. Hello. Super. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I like the enthusiasm. Uh, my name is Natalia Bejan. I'm the executive director of Startup Moldova Foundation, and I'm super privileged today to be uh, having this uh, speech in front of you to present you a couple, just a couple of the technological startups that we have in the Republic of Moldova. We'll have five of them. Uh, coming on stage with their pitches just a couple of minutes later. Uh, but before we do that, I would like to introduce you a bit, uh, a couple of the details about the technological startups ecosystem in Moldova and what Startup Moldova as such is doing. Um, if we can move, please, to the next slide. I don't know if we have a pointer or not. Thank you very much. Startup Moldova is a non-governmental organization. We've been founded by the Association of ICT Companies. We have only a bit over a year uh, of our existence. And what we do, we are trying to be an active enabler. Thank you. An active enabler of the start technological startups that exist in the Republic of Moldova. And we have three pillars or three directions uh, in which we are working. And basically, the whole team is doing the effort. And when I say the whole team, at current moment, we are three and a half people. Uh, so, but for me, it's an army. It's a whole army. We do the following in the very good sense of the army. I'm sorry. Uh, we do three things. Ecosystem and community building. We do facilitating the access to funding. And we also do support and offering resources to the startups. What do I mean through this? And I want to guide you through a couple of very specific examples for each of those three pillars. The first of one, how are we strengthening the community? We are doing founder meetups. We are trying to make sure that the community founders know each other, that the partnerships are being created. We are the organization who is keeping track of the database of the technological startups. So if you are interested to know who exists in the market, our team is making the efforts to make sure that we know who exists, what do they do, what kind of needs they have, what kind of team they are working with, and what resources they need. 
Also, we are doing promotion of the individual startups, those that we are proud of, those that you will see, for example, today as well on the stage within this panel, but as well within the next ones. Uh, we are writing in the press about them. We're making interviews nationally and internationally just to make sure that people around the world, investors, know about the best ideas, the best teams that come from the Republic of Moldova. How are we facilitating the access to funding? Funding means investors. Funding doesn't mean just money. When it means investors, it means, first of all, we are trying to provide the connections of the startups to the investors, offline and online. Online, for example, we are doing the talk to an investor um, online webinars where we are inviting uh, investors from abroad. It's just a coincidence that so far all of the investors we've invited are from the United States, but you know they are the number one in the world, so we are learning from the best. We are organizing offline events where we are inviting as well investors and connecting them to the uh, startups that we have. For example, as Startup Moldova Summit, uh, we will organize the next one on the 25th of November, so save the date. Uh, and as well, as one of the examples, we will be launching in October the Digital Impact Program with the support of the European Union, Sweden, and, impl and implementing within a project with Startup City Kahul, where we will be giving grants worth of 400,000 euros to the startups and innovative companies from Kahul region, from the south of the country. Third, and not the least important, what support and resources do we offer? First of all, we, Startup Moldova, are making sure that we know the most important drivers on organizations internationally that do cool stuff for the startups. This is just a couple of the organizations that we have partnered with. Startup Swiss Association, Startup Hub Poland, Impact Hub Bucharest, Techstar, Seedstars. A couple of days ago, we made sure that we are also starting a partnership with Startup Blink, who are just like a quite important name internationally. Also, also, similarly to the colleagues from Startup Estonia, because again, we are trying to learn from the best, we are working with our team on providing a, team, a database of legal templates for the startups, because when you're a founder, you want to think about partnerships and how to raise the money. You don't want to think how to create a legal document, so it would be great to have a database from where you can get inspired and just use the templates. Also, we are providing mentorship. We are trying to connect the founders from the startups with the best minds from Moldova and internationally to share their experience, to link new partners, to give them new perspectives on how they can grow, how can they attract funding and scale. As I said a bit earlier, what our team is doing as well, we are keeping the track of the tech startups from Moldova. At this point, our database has 139 startup ideas and teams out of which 56 are actually tech startups that we are tracking on a very close basis, which means 56 tech startups actually have a team, actually have an MVP. It's not just an idea stage. It's not just a graduation of a demo uh, day or an accelerator. They are actually worth and ready to stand in front of an investor and to start pitching. Out of those 56 startups, just to give you even a bit a better perspective, Interestingly enough, majority of them, or like the biggest portion, uh, if you are just ordering them, is the health tech, followed by the ed tech, social media tech, e-commerce, fintech, agrotech, and then some others' ideas, some others, ver some other verticals. It would be unfair, incomplete to stand here and to tell you about uh, the startup ecosystem of Moldova without mentioning the ecosystem builders. I've named here four who I think and we think are the most active ones in promoting the startup mindset in Moldova. And here I'm speaking about pre-acceleration programs, acceleration programs, education programs. And these are alphabetically ordered DreamApps, Technovator, Yep Moldova, XY Partners. If you want to get in touch with any one of them, make sure to contact us. We will gladly make an intro to them. And because we are here because of the startups, I'm not going to take any more time from you. I will want to invite today five of the startup founders. This will be Dumitru Gangaluk, from, uh, founder of Bolt from Media Art. This will be Dumitru Cioric, Development Director at Fagura, which is a fintech startup. Vitalia Tataru, founder of AC Tech. If you are 
somehow know, uh, if you know somehow the fintech market of Moldova, probably you also know the name of Vitalia Tataro, so I'm sure it will be an interesting product to be presented and to hear from your side. Emil Kikioi, the founder of Bloom Coding, super excited about that one, and Ganevni Gennady, the CTO of Deli.io. Thank you very much for your attention so far, but now is starting probably the most interesting part of the presentation, the pitching part. Dimitru Gangaluk, please. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, everyone. I am Dimitru, founder of The Bold. So let's start. Click is here. Oh, not here, it's here. Yes. Um, hi, Dimitrius here, founder of The Bold, the platform that sell and rent verified and trusted immersive experiences for any type of event. Do you know this cool interactive installation or activation that brand using to interact with you like a user, provide you like a samples or uh, another interaction? Do you know this cool stuff like laser show, projection mappings, AR booth, photo booth? All this cool stuff is called New Media Art by Artist. Brands call it um, experiential marketing. But all this cool stuff has one, one, one idea, to providing an interactive, uh, interactive immersive experience to you, your, to your to you like a customer. So um, this why it's important. It, this is important because seven of 10 customers are more likely to buy a product after interacting, in, interacting with the, the product at emotional level. And uh, this is why, and this is because uh, nine of 10 uh, product failed uh, each year. Three of 10 failed due to poor implementation. This is why brands are more skeptical and more fair to try something new. They are afraid, uh, they are afraid to try new innovation and implement it in, they, in their brand communication. And just that pain means 78 billion millions uh, uh, loses each year just in pitch phase and just in USA. Yes, um, we do this platform uh, to solve this problem, to offer that interaction to uh, final customer and to provide um, to provide the final brand uh, that solution uh, with this type of interaction, this type of products. And this is, imp this is uh, possible because of our awesome team and board members who have uh, uh, seven years of experience in uh, uh, new media art. But why no? Because uh, that's one of the fastest growing uh, market in the, in the Europe. It's uh, evaluating 2.2 trillion euros in uh, 2028, and the performing art it's evaluating to 163 billion in 2022, end of, uh, end of 2022. And yes, our beachhead market is Romanian. This means entertainment and media market. Uh, what is evaluating in 2. 2.9 uh, uh, euros, uh, billions euro, uh, and we take to aim 9 millions in the next two, three years. This means 0.34% uh, of that market. Of course, we have competition, but we have four strong differentiation from this competition. And at uh, the moment, our uh, um, business model is based on two options. It's transaction fee and uh, community fee. Uh, community fee have more, um, it's more like tools, PR, and the uh, community growing for us. But uh, in, the, in this current stage, uh, after um, Innovix Accelerator, we have proven our idea. We have already our first clients, festivals who use, using and try, trying our uh, solution. And this uh, for us means 38,000 euros with having any line of coding or any high line or any kind of product uh, really release it yet. So our go-to-market strategy is to hire a bold team to develop the product and to increase our database of clients and new media artists. That means uh, using um, community fee-based uh, um, business model. So what we're looking for is the 200k euros. Uh, mostly we're looking for mentorship in uh, this field like PR, marketing, and events, and the second one, we're looking to networking, networking and any type of field. Thank you very much. Super. So any, any Thank questions, you very much, by Dimitri. the way? We don't have Q&A, yes? No. Yeah. Thank you if very you much. If you can pass, please, uh, to the next speaker. Thank you. Next on stage, I will be inviting Dimitru Cioric. Dimitri Choric is the de development director of Fagura, which is a fintech company, fintech startup in the Republic of Moldova. Thank you, guys. 
uh, and he is representing the company that is the peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace. Dimitro, please. Hello, good day everyone. My name is Dumitru Cioric and I want to talk to you about Fagura. We aim to build the first community digital bank in Eastern Europe. Born in Moldova, but we want to be the best in Eastern Europe. We have two types of clients, borrowers looking for lower interest rates and investors looking to maximize their returns. They meet on our platform and enhance the experience. We have built a proprietary credit scoring which is analyzing dozens of criteria. Financial data, credit scoring, taxes, and it takes the decision in one second to be funded or not. We have been active on the market for more than three years and we received validation from different stakeholders. We've received support from USID. We have managed to raise more than 300,000 euros last year on the Cedars platform in London. And our plans are big. Our business model is very simple. We take a commission fee of 3% from borrowers and 2% from investors, and we expect to reach the break even in the next one or two years. The figures about the traction speak for themselves. We are thrilled to announce that we have managed to intermediate in the last three years more than 2 million euro total loans funded with a very good figure on the NPL, comparable with the European market, 6%. This summer we have launched a new product dedicated to startups and SMEs and more specifically, we have opened the, uh, the procedures for funding SMEs and startups. Like on the individual side, we are analyzing dozens of criteria of the company, but also of the founder. And in the end, we have decide whether this SME deserves to be funded or not. We've decided to launch these operations because startups and SMEs have very low access to finance. New created companies don't get loans at the banks or at the microfinance because their credit history is zero. Well, we are a game changer and we are doing this differently. The next year is a very important milestone for us as we are preparing to launch transfers and payments. We have about or more than 1 billion euros sent to Moldova each year by the Moldovan diaspora. That means we want to enable our services so we can accommodate all those funds that come to Moldova. We want to become a fully digital community bank by allowing borrowing, investing and transfer money instantly throughout our platform. The next addressable market is the European market, but this is the next step that we will uh, pursue. Major mil milestones for our startup are the next year, when we plan to launch, launch the digital banking, and in the next two years, we're planning the Series A round investment. In the next couple of weeks, we will be launching our second crowdfunding campaign to raise about 1 million euro we have more than 200,000 euro already committed, but the official campaign is going to start, I believe, at the beginning of October 20 next month. With those money, those money will be invested in product development, headhunt, and marketing. All of this would have not been possible without our, our great team. We know each other for more than 15 years, and we have managed already five business exits. A special thanks to our partners who were near by us along this road. Thank you very much, and if you're keen to invest, come with us to build the first community digital bank in Eastern Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dimitru.
uh, and really f keeping our fingers crossed for the upcoming second round of the crowdfunding that Fagora will be launching in a couple of weeks' time. Next in line, I would like to invite Vitalia Tataru, the founder of AC Tech, who will be presenting the startup called Atlas. Hello, everyone. So the next. Uh, just, I mean, uh, <coughs> we have a... Uh, not yet? Ah, oh, it's going. Just, I mean, very quickly about the, 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 the company uh, and, in fact, the team. Uh, just, I mean, here I'll... I'll uh, um, make a, a short overview. Yeah, we have, I mean, launched a couple of years or so years ago a company, I mean, on the IT side. Uh, based on our experience in the banking and digital banking, yeah, we have a lot of experience and we just, I mean, decided in, in, in order to go for the startup into the, 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 the digital banking called banking as a service. Uh, that's that's another, another point. Uh, so that's uh, quickly, yeah. It's uh, uh, going, I mean, to be a, a, a fintech platform that are connecting, in fact, two, two different sites that are going to be converged. Yeah, first of all, large companies, yeah, so, you know, the, like telco, like, like retail chains, many other, I mean, which with a large database, I mean, of the, of the customers, yeah, they are going to, 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 to look for, for another stream of, uh, of, uh, of income. Yeah, that's because the, the many, many services, they just became, in fact, the, the, like a commodity, yeah? What we are going, I mean, to, to do, we are going to connect them to the banking services, yeah? How we are going to do this? Yeah, in fact, so we have, I mean, like, a, uh, initially, I mean, the, the, the uh, plan was to start in Moldova, but uh, because of the discussion with the potential investors currently, yeah, might be all go, I mean, for the first launch, outside Moldova, but in any case, we are planning to do it here as well. Uh, we have, I mean, built a lot of, uh, a lot of projects here, so with the team, the team is uh, uh, going, I mean, to be hired a couple of people as well, yeah, but uh, there are, I mean, five senior managers in the banking, in the, in, in the big data, and the, and the outsource services as well. Uh, what, in fact, the, the, the problem that we are going to solve, first of all, yeah? First of all, the, as I said, I mean, large customer-based companies, they are going, I mean, to monetize their, I mean, customer information, customer data. We have a lot of financial institutions, yeah, that are, are going into the digital transformation, yeah. Mostly the, the, the big uh, uh, chains or the, the, the large banks and financial institutions, they are, uh, they have enough, I mean, large customer database or financial potential in order to do them, to, to do this by themselves, but but about I mean 80 to 90 percent of the of the small banks they don't have either the the, the digital and the IT capacities, neither their financial potential and uh, and culture to, to 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 go into the digital banking. This is uh, in fact the the key of my my my, uh, my pitch. In fact, the the idea what is going. I mean, you are connecting the the information. I mean, collected by the large companies, we are, in fact, enrich the, 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 the information about the customers, yeah? So, so through the different sources, yeah, open sources, open sources using, I mean, and, and in fact, uh, uh, we are strictly going, I mean, to, to follow the GDPR, I mean, the European Union GDPR in order to, to respect the, the, the legislation. We are connecting them to the financial institutions, yeah, but Atlas is a company based, uh, as an idea, based on the, on the uh, electronic money license, yeah. Does matter, it would be in Moldova. I mean, we need to, 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 to respect the legislation to get it here, or, I mean, it would be in the, in the European Union or, or in other countries, yes. Yeah? So, like, like we have planned after the European Union to launch it in the, in the uh, Asia Pacific region, just because we have the good experience there. We have launched a couple of companies there in the past being the managers, yeah? Uh, in fact, we are, uh, so we are going, I mean, to, to, to launch it by, by the basic product. By the way, by the way, just now, I mean, in Moldova, we have found that, strictly speaking, there is no uh, connection between the debit card 
account and the current account online one. Just the, 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 the best banks are going, I mean, to do it in the near future, yeah? And still, uh, there is a lot of work uh, with the customer experience here, yeah, and, and the starting from the onboarding and final, finalizing with the services into mobile banking. Initially, we, uh, we have decided to go with the mobile and web application, so-called mobile first, and now we are going to, 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 um, uh, uh, to take off the web application and to go only the, 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 as a concept of the mobile only. We are going, I mean, to, to have the clear line of, of products with the nearest, I mean, 12 months. Yeah, and this is uh, also the business model. The business model is uh, uh, revenue sharing because going, I mean, to, 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 uh, uh, to make the profit and to distribute it between the large companies and the financial institutions and the Atlas platform, yeah? And the concept is as lower, I mean, as or, is, or vice versa, as higher is the, is the uh, product, yeah, like uh, like uh, loans, yeah. So the, the the profit and the the revenue of the from this product will be distributed in favor of the banks, just because they will take care about the risks. Yeah, uh, we are believing that the uh, central banking bodies, yeah, authorities, they won't take uh, out of the of the banks the risk management. That's for sure. Yeah, we have in 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 the platform the the decision engine based on the different uh, combining, I mean, the, the approaches starting from the rule-based uh, and as well we have the, the uh, solution based on the artificial intelligence on machine learning. Yeah, taking this in the, in the couple of seconds, yeah, but, but those are meant to be used and the responsibility will be on the, on the bank side. So just, I mean, if you, we have the, the uh, we believe that we have a good market opportunity here in Romania. Uh, Moldova is, uh, I would say, might be uh, now, uh, in our, I mean, current times, it's not, might be the best climate, I mean, in order, I mean, uh, uh, of, of investments, yeah, because of the war, because of the many, so, but Moldova, uh, despite of his, uh, of its uh, small uh, size, uh, it's a, on our, on our understanding, it's an ideal sandbox, yeah, to go, I mean, to launch and to go outside of the country. Uh, so we are, are looking for the Romania and European Union, but as I said, we know, I mean, the market in the Asia Pacific as well. Uh, so that's the plan, in fact, how we are going to launch it, yeah. Uh, nevertheless, we already have a couple of the investors who have the, the term sheet already signed for the first investor, I mean, the private one. We are looking, I mean, to, to, to go to the to the uh, investment uh, boutiques as well, yeah, and might be uh, depending on the on the discussions and, and the agreements here, might be we'll launch it in first in Romania or in Kazakhstan perhaps, yeah, and that's I mean we we are looking as I said with the 2.3 million uh, euros for the for the not only for the launch, it's in fact the launch and the the, the break even within the up to 15 months. Uh, as I said, the half a million already. I mean the the the, the, the first term sheet is signed by investor. Uh, this is a, just, I mean, some like a forecast compound, compound annual growth rate in Moldova. We expected in a 99 percent. In Romania, is 170, and the, the European Union will be up to 250. Uh, I would not bother you with uh, technology details. You will have, I mean, uh, the questions and willing, I mean, to discuss. Yeah, so I think uh, the, 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 the connections, I mean, will be through organizers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Vitalia. Next on stage, I want to invite someone who will be certainly rocking the stage. It's Emil Kikioi from the EdTech startup Bloom Coding. Emil, please. Thank you. Meet Bloom Coding. Our mission is to move civilization forward by building the next generation of technology creators. And today, we are teaching children how to code in live online classes. So we asked the most advanced AI network in the world, DALI 2, what does the future look like? And this is what it said. At Bloom Coding, we agree. By far, we believe that the most discriminated are the children of the future. 
And for the billions of unborn souls, we need millions more teachers, doctors, and technology creators. The world is crying for help. It's telling us already we need technology creators. The biggest skill gap in IT. The biggest salaries in IT. And so parents across the world started to realize that the opportunity for success for their children and the best and brightest future lies in technology careers. And as school systems fail, they looked into the after school. 10,000 families in Romania alone go to physical brick and mortar after school coding clubs. And as an owner of such club in the past, I quickly realized how ineffective they are. Large group sizes, usually 14, with mixed ages, usually children with nine-year-olds and 14-year-olds in the same classroom. No personalization, almost like another school. But even worse than that, there's hidden costs that almost double the tuition cost. Commuting, which is almost one hour per one hour of tuition. And this really frustrates double full-time working parents in traffic congested cities like Bucharest. We've realized that there's a huge market opportunity worldwide of these parents that want the best and brightest future for their children. So for these parents, we've built Bloom Coding, a fully online coding after school that teaches children how to code in small group classes of maximum four children. We've put in place an advanced e-learning infrastructure and the best part, we teach our children how to code by building virtual and augmented reality experiences. And even better than that, we send them home actual edtech tools. We've completely reimagined what it means to engage a child being the only ones in the world to do this. And that's why more than a thousand families in Romania in just 12 months trusted us with their children. And that's why we quickly conquered the Romanian market, becoming the biggest digital school in the country in just 12 months. During Rubik Accelerator, which we just graduated, we replicated our model in two new countries, in Poland and Bulgaria. And boy, oh boy, are we successful. We simply cannot keep up with demand. So for this reason, we are raising a funding round, which is already partly committed to capture this market opportunity and really accelerate next year and become the biggest leading coding school for children in the CEE region. We are an international team, mostly based in Moldova, that is prepared to think in billions. So for this reason, we ask you to join our mission in helping parents worldwide reach the best and brightest future for their children. This was Bloom Coding, this was Emil, and we thank you. Super. Emil, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. So we've had one startup from Creative Tech. We've had two startups from FinTech. We've had one startup now from EdTech. It is my pleasure now to invite Gennady Ganebny, who is the, uh, who is the CTO of Delhi IO, and we are going into the food industry, delivery industry. Gennady. So, hello everyone. I'm Gennady Ganebny, co-founder and CTO at the Delio, a SaaS solution uh, for uh, restaurants, online sales and delivery needs. And uh, here's the other team members of Delio, including uh, my co-founder Anton Perkin and uh, the whole pool of wonderful developers uh, and QA specialists, UI designers and even people and culture man uh, managers. So, how the thing started? Uh, as you know, the, uh, the pandemic gave a huge boost to the delivery business. 
So actually it created a new pattern in the clients and uh, sales relationship. So like my own example, since the pandemic started, I think I go to the food store maybe once uh, a month. The, all the other time my wife just orders from Metro. So I, I forgot how the, the food store looks like. Um, and now when the pandemic is, o is over, the behavior is still there. And we now have another crisis uh, with, this, with the energy, energy prices, with all this prior crisis, uh, price crisis. And uh, the restaurants and start looking to uh, lower their costs. And uh, the delivery marketplaces, they jumped in. Sometimes um, ask about like 30% uh, of their revenue. So, uh, and they would like to launch their own uh, solutions, but this is requires development. This is uh, associated with higher costs. And here we jump in. So uh, the Delia Yo offers the restaurants a SaaS solution which includes the full uh, pack of uh, the appli applications they need. So this is the client store front, the driver matcher tabs, uh, and uh, order and fleet management systems. And uh, they can uh, start this with uh, like two weeks without no coding. And because this is a SaaS, so they don't need to spend money on the infrastructure. And uh, what is the what we Delhi gives them? It gives them direct uh, access to their customers, because sometimes marketplaces may like, prefer one seller to another. Now they have their own uh, solution, and they don't depend on the marketplace. Um, so why we do great? Because we pay a lot of uh, attention to the automation, which um, uh, allows us uh, to. Uh, Actually, not us, but the restaurant to run the system with the minimum amount of people required, and we do s strong attention to IA and ML for uh, f to allow faster delivery times and better order experience. Um, if you would like to invest with us, so what is our pros here? Uh, so first of all, uh, we have our own development team, which uh, reduces our development budget. We Using our solution, we actually launch our own uh, delivery system. So we have a good, ex uh, we go have a good experience, like hands-on experience on this business. So we're not just like doing this from some our theoretic basis. And we uh, work a lot of data for uh, improving the process. And what could be the cons? Okay, it's a startup. So, and here's our product showcase. Uh, okay. So, uh, by the way, even we, we try to like let restaurants uh, replace the marketplaces, we still have a marketplace also in our pack. So if someone wants to run a marketplace, he can run it with our solution. So the client storefront, um, uh, okay, or the, Order management for restaurants, uh, driver application, uh, administration panel, yeah, and uh, some numbers about our business. So we launched in uh, 21. Uh, so far, using our systems, uh, more than uh, 100,000 orders were made, more than 700,000 visitors, and we have uh, three white label implementations so far. So our best showcase is the iFood MD the delivery solution we run here in Moldova. It was launched in uh, 20, and the annual turnover is like um, 900,000, and uh, more than uh, 25,000 users per month. So this is our competitors we're looking at, and we try to compete with. And uh, our business model is uh, based on uh, two things. First of all, this is the subscription fees, which is at the end of all ends uh, lower than what marketplaces charge from the restaurants. And we also um, offer uh, this as a uh, standalone uh, solution. So if someone want, wants to have more, better control over what's happening with the uh, uh, with, the, what he, with the system he's having, we can deliver as a stand standalone. 
So uh, rec uh, in total, at this moment, we're looking for uh, like one uh, million dollars investment, and uh, we have. Uh, quite ambitious plan for uh, f further automation and more uh, integration with the different e-commerce platforms to help restaurants to build even uh, better uh, online sales experiences. So, thank you. That's it. Thank you very much. This was all from our side, all that we could fit into five presentations. If any of those rang a bell, but I'm sure that you've enjoyed the, all of them, feel free to get in touch with the organizers of the conference or with Startup Moldova such, and we will gladly put you in touch with the guys that were here in front of you pitching their businesses. Thank you very much, and passing the microphone on to the next panelist. Thank you.